Hello everyone and welcome. And so I would like to open my time together today with a little bit of chime with intention to call in your full presence and awareness into this moment presently now as I'm going to open up our conversation today. And so if you're joining in, take a deep breath, inhale into the nose and exhale through the mouth. Relax the shoulders, relax the body, taking a big, conscious, present intention to be here. And so welcome everyone. For those of you who are new to my page, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Ali and I go by Aleya Moon and I am a founder of Sacred Muse Tantra. This page for me is a space to educate, motivate, and inspire humanity into looking at sexuality from a conscious and mindful perspective. My entire work is about facilitating connection, healing, and transformation by incorporation of tantric elements. My work is about getting you into the body with presence, with awareness, and connecting you to your sacred pleasure, okay? In our world today, our humanity is very disconnected, first of all, from their hearts, second of all, from their bodies, why? Because most of the world is stuck where? Ding, 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 in their heads, okay? We are constantly working, okay? We're constantly doing. We have to be in a state of survival, okay? Most of the world today is in a state of survival, meaning that they're worried about putting food on their children's table. They're worried about paying for their lights, for their mortgage, for their basic survival needs, and so when we are in a constant state of survival, it's really hard for us to be in the body, okay? Be connected to our heart, be connected to our feelings. And so a lot of what I do with my personal work with my clients is really getting people into the senses, into the feeling, okay? Into the experiences of pleasure that are available to us through so many different pathways, and unfortunately, when I talk about pleasure, a lot of people tend to think all about sex. And of course, we can access states of pleasure through sexuality, but we can also access pleasure through so many other ways. Most importantly, when we finally attune to our senses, okay? One and very simple example I will give you how you can experience pleasures from something super simple is this. You bring some flowers into your house. And so part of our sensory is our vision. So having this beautiful bouquet that's standing in front of me here as I get my work done is bringing pleasure to my human experience. And then check this out. Mm. Using the sense that's within my nostrils to sniff the essence of this rose, to permeate it into my being and to appreciate this amazing godly creation for its being. What about this way, you guys? Look at the colors. Look at the hues of the golden, kind of like blood orange that's meshed with the yellow. Isn't that also pleasurable to look at something like that? And so that's just a simple way for you guys to see that there's so many ways for us to access pleasure. Another way that I really love accessing pleasure is through taste. I love delicious, healthy, yummy foods. And so when we eat, a lot of people eat looking at their phones, listening to the news, like eating on the go while you're driving. And so again, we're disconnected from our pleasure, okay? And we can't really access sacredness when we're not fully in the moment of experiencing what it is that we are experiencing. And so as I'm starting this conversation and I wanted to talk today about sex, we have to understand before we can fully experience the divinity of full access to our sexual pleasure, we need to get the hell out of the head, okay? And so for a lot of people, when they go into sexuality, it's really with a space of getting there to get off. 
You're going into sex to get somewhere. So in your head, you're already going into the bedroom with an agenda to get somewhere. Okay. And so on my channel here, I talk all about sacred and conscious sexuality. This is not your regular, basic, prim primitive time of experience. Sacred sexuality takes place outside of the head, in the body, and through the hearts. And we can begin connecting to other people through the hearts if we are going into sexuality with a focused goal of using that individual for self-gratification. Okay, this is what a lot of men that are practicing sexuality unconsciously are doing. They are using their feminine partners as a tool for personal masturbation. In that experience, her pleasure is not necessarily his agenda. His agenda is to use her body, her womb for his own awakening, for his own stimulation and his own release. Okay, I'm not talking about everyone. I know there's many men who don't practice sexuality like this, but unfortunately in our world today, that's kind of like the common occurrence. And so it is my invitation through my channel. If you're new to my channel, I highly recommend that you scroll through all of my posts because every post is a nugget of wisdom that I've poured my heart into for you to learn what does it mean to practice conscious and sacred sexuality. And also a lot of my IGTV videos, just like the one that I'm recording right now, are talking on these topics. So if you have yet to take a journey into the portal of the sacred muse, I highly recommend. Okay. And so I'm talking about sex today because I recently had amazing and juicy and very delightful sexual union with my beloved. And what I've been learning is when I'm practicing sexuality with a conscious man, there is like something really different that happens in that union. Okay. And the biggest difference is that sex no longer has a goal. Okay. And when sex no longer has a goal, there is this space that opens up for magic to unfold. And I began to experience things within my own body that I have not experienced before. Okay. And this is something that's really interesting for women, especially when you practice sexuality for extended period of time, your body begins to go into, well, I can't speak for you. I'm going to say for me, my body begins to go into these trance like states where my body receives pleasure and it responds in its own and unique way. And so something that I want to invite for the males that are listening on this video, when you practice sexuality, Number one, take away the aspect of ejaculation as being the end point, okay? If you're not able to last very long, because I'm aware that a lot of men experience premature ejaculation, overly excitement, perhaps performance anxiety, I totally understand all of that. If you're a man who's experiencing that and you want to work on that, please contact with me for one-on-one -on -one sessions. However, when you're going into sexuality, when you take away the aspect of ejaculation, this is a space that opens up for pleasure play, okay? And sex is not just about physical penetration, okay? Bringing in all the spiritual elements of mind, body, spirit into this practice. Conscious and sacred sexuality is a dance. It's a union. It's an act of worship and devotion to your beloved. And we can practice worshiping and devoting to our beloved when we are practicing casual sex with strangers off of Bumble or Tinder. Okay? I'm sorry to tell you this, guys, but you cannot devote to a woman if you're not practicing really worshiping and honoring her as the divinity, honoring her heart, honoring her emotions, honoring her needs and her desires. How many of you go into the bedroom and ask your partner, honey, what do you really enjoy? And how many of you honeys out there actually know what do you enjoy? What turns you on? What gets you to a point of reaching these high and orgasmic states of being? Because something that I teach often is for a woman to reach orgasm, she needs to be stimulated for an extended period of time. Unlike men who can go from zero to 60 in less than five minutes, women need at least 25 to 45 minutes of foreplay 
before her yoni is stimulated and wet enough for penetration. And another reason why a lot of women experience lack of orgasms or inability to reach orgasms is because she is not turned on enough to receive you. And too many men shove themselves in without actually knowing if she's ready to receive you, okay? There's a post that I made and it goes something like, do you ask permission for your woman to enter? And it got a lot of responses on my Facebook and on Instagram because a lot of men were like, what? I have to ask for permission? Like, how dare she say that? Well, excuse me, you don't just walk into somebody's house uninvited. You don't just like open the door, walk in, go straight to the fridge and start digging into the cake. So like, why do you think you can just shove yourself in inside a woman? Even if you're making out and you're turned on and all this happening, again, I am teaching you conscious and secret sexuality. Asking a woman for permission or figuring out some form of maybe nonverbal cues that she is ready is absolutely important, okay? For me personally, as a woman, I don't like expect my partner to ask me for permission because I am in control of my pleasure. So I will let him in or I will invite him in with my body, with my movement when I'm ready. But when I'm not ready, my hips will swing back. They will move to the side. Like they will communicate to my partner that I'm not ready. And fortunately, I've had beautiful conscious partners with whom I'm practicing sexuality. So they are aware. And so something that's really important is for you men to understand that female pleasure is very different than your pleasure. And for the women that are listening, it's important for you to also learn your body. Learn what turns you on, what makes your juices come out and feel really aroused to receive your partner. Because if you are a woman who is constantly receiving penetration before you are ready, you are literally inviting trauma into your body, okay? Maybe very subtle, maybe very deep and subconscious. But things like lack of wetness, sexual pain, inability to orgasm are all signs that something isn't right. Because as an embodied woman who is connected to her body, who is connected to her womb, to her yoni, it is your birthright to have powerful, blissful, and mind-blowing orgasms. And if you're not having those, that is your cue that something is off. So for a woman, it is your responsibility to get to know yourself. And something that I teach with my one-on-one clients is conscious self-pleasure practices. These are both for men and for women, okay? For men, learning how to masturbate, that's a little bit different than how you were taught, okay? Doing this until you come while you watch pornography, I'm going to say this and some of you are not going to like it. It's fucking toxic. And it is the reason why you can't last longer in bed. It is a reason why you feel disconnected towards your partner. And for women, you know, learning how to masturbate without the vibrator on your clit and actually practicing self-pleasure with toys that go inwards. Okay, for the longest time before I was conscious of my own pleasure, I only experienced masturbation with a vibrator on my clitoris without really knowing what's a G-spot orgasm, what's a cervical orgasm. Like I had no idea. I just thought like, oh, like clitoral orgasm, that's all there is. But it wasn't until I started getting into these practices that I was like, oh shit, my G-spot is like my most favorite spot now when he can find it, okay? And that's another thing I like to joke around, but it's not a fucking joke because so many men don't even know where the G-spot is. They don't know how to massage the G-spot, okay? And the G-spot stimulation is how we can really activate a woman to her sacred waters, okay? In Tantra, there is a term for female ejaculation that is called Amrita, okay? It is a sacred fluid of immortality, Okay, when a woman is embodied and her Shakti is activated, Amrita flows. It is different than ejaculation that is achieved through really intense penetration. 
Amrita is a fluid that comes out from a different way. It has a different of a smell and it has a different taste. And if you are a man who's practicing conscious sexuality and you're able to activate your woman's pleasure to a space where she releases her Amrita, it is her gift to you. The juice of immortality, that which you can drink and receive and take internally, okay? Just like so many women swallow men's semen, semen is a very sacred liquid. And I wrote a post about talking to men, where do you leave your semen? Because that is your seed. And so question for you men who like to ejaculate inside random women's mouths, do you know where you are planting your seeds, your power? You're giving away your life force power. Where are you planting your power? Part of sacred sexuality is understanding your life force that is within your semen. The amount of energy that your body has to take to reproduce it. Constant and frequent releases of ejaculation depletes your energy life force supply. So men, after 45, start to kind of feel a little down. You know, your testosterone drops. It is a scientific fact that the older the man gets, the less testosterone he has. Okay, woman does not lose her sexual essence with her orgasmic release. You know, she's designed differently from you. However, as a man, the older you get, it is very important that you start getting into a relationship with your body and with your fluids because your body is sacred. Part of sacred sexuality and Tantra and the work that I'm bringing into this world is the remembrance of who we are as divine beings that are embodying these bodies. This flesh, the bones, the fluids, the heart that is beating, that is I am, is sacred. This temple is God-given gift to all of us to honor, to love and accept, to nourish and to take care for our life, okay? Because how you take care of this body is going to relate to how you live your life and how long you live your life and how your vitality is going to sustain itself throughout your whole life. And unfortunately, there is a lot of unconsciousness in our world. And I am here to change that. I am here to remind you guys that your body is your fucking temple. So what are you doing with it? How are you nourishing it? How are you nurturing your body? Because a lot of us have no fucking clue. Okay, fast food, drinking crappy water, alcohol, drugs, pharmaceutical substances, you know, living stressful lives, you are literally like killing yourself and depleting yourself unconsciously. And it's okay. You know, we're not going to blame ignorance. But also ignorance is a choice. And you have the choice to choose differently because you have at your fingertips access to everything that you need in this life to thrive. Okay, thousands of years ago, People didn't have access to this. You had to sit with masters face to face in order to receive the information that I'm sharing with you freely over the web right now. Okay. Master to teacher practices. There were verbal teachings. You had to be an apprentice. You had to sit at the door of your master's hut before you could be accepted into studying the arts that this master had to offer. And now you have it for free at the tips of your fingertips. So what are you doing? I hope that you're doing something right. And I hope that these messages are inspiring you to do something different. Because nothing is going to change until you change. Until you take the reign of your life. And remember who the heck you are. Okay? Too many people are lost in this world because they have forgotten who they are. We have forgotten who we are, you guys. You are an extension of God's source. I am an extension of God's source. And I am here to remind you that you are too. But before you can fully live as an embodied being, you need to get rid of all the toxicity that's first of all in your mind. Because a lot of your minds are full of toxic crap. 
okay? Watching televisions, listening to the news, having like stupid conversations, gossiping, talking about other people. Like if you're doing that, you're polluting your mind, your body, okay? You need to detoxify your body. Do you know how much shit you have flowing in your digestive tract? Did you know your, your gut is the source of all your illnesses, okay? Western world has really great like medical field, but really no, they have really great marketing for pharmaceutical drugs that so many people are codependent and addicted to, which cause long-term damage and death when nature has provided us everything that we need. One of the things I love for taking care of my body is detoxing through herbs. I love Ayurveda. I've been practicing with Ayurvedic practices for years and I fucking love it. Like I get high when my body is clean, when the herbs are doing the things for me and when I'm clear, I'm focused, like my mind isn't foggy. And the reason why I'm sharing so much about the body because I went through my own transformation of depression, of anxiety, and I still get it. Because let's not, let's not kid about the fact that the world is fucking crazy. Like there's literally poisoning coming from every angle. There is poisoning in your food, in your water, in your air, on your television, like from everywhere. They're just, they're trying to cocoon us into a box. And now it's in your body. If you're doing vaccinations and you're putting things in your body that you haven't researched, you got poison in your body. Sorry, but shit hurts. Truth fucking hurts because it's true. So we need to become conscious, mind, body, spirit. We're connecting to our spirit, okay? It's not enough that you just go to church and listen to a pastor. What's important is are you practicing the teachings that your pastor is ministering? What is your connection to God? Do you have a connection to God? Do you have faith that is stronger than like all the bullshit in this world? Do you have faith in a higher power? And are you living a virtuous life? Do you know what it means to live a virtuous life? Do you know what are your values? And are you actually connected to your spirit? Do you do things daily that connect you to your spirit? And for everybody, it's different. For me, one of the things I love about my life and the way that I'm living is practicing sacred sexuality. For me, sacred sexuality is my prayer to God, especially when I'm with a conscious partner. Okay, because something that happens for me during sex is when I reach high states of orgasm, I literally scream for God. God comes through at the top of my orgasms every fucking time. And that's how I honor my divinity by giving myself permission to be in sacred pleasure, to be loved by a man who loves, accepts, sees, and honors me as a woman and honors my needs and my desires. Like my current sexual partner knows I need 30 minutes of foreplay. He knows how many kisses I need on my neck, the massage I need on my foot. Like he knows how to touch, how to kiss, and he knows to make sure I am turned on and wet before he penetrates me. And that makes me feel so good that I can surrender to his love. And something that came up for me last time when it was with my partner is like, men, you have an opportunity to give your woman a gift. Your lingam is a wand of fucking light. What are you doing with it? Why are you not using it as the wand of light that it truly is? Because your lingam can actually bring healing to her. It can bring creativity and awakening to her soul and to her spirit. But when your cock is not connected to your heart, you're doing damage to her. Part of sacred sexuality is caring for her physical being, emotional being, and her spiritual being. This is why I'm not a fan of our culture right now. We are doing a lot of freaking damage to each other with casual sex, lack of commitment and devotion, all this polyamory groupy activities. I know this because I've taken the path. I've explored polyamory and it has ruined my relationship, especially when it's done in partnership that is not mature enough and that doesn't have the emotional tools 
to co-regulate issues that come up. I truly believe that God had a point when he talked about the divine feminine and divine masculine coming into sacred union. There is sacrifice, there is service, and there is a devotion that takes place between a man and woman when they come together and they share life, sex, and purpose together. I am right now returning to a desire for a sacred monogamish union because I want to see the magic that God has placed for us in that space. And in our modern day world, we have gotten really far from that. Okay, we've lost the way. Back in the day, there was no Tinder, there was no Bumble to go and run off to the moment you have a problem. When you were in relationship, you were committed. You were in marriage for a lifetime till death do us part. And I understand that a lot of those concepts are very outdated and they don't resonate in our society today. And this is why I teach discernment. You have to practice discernment, meaning that you listen, you read something, and you have to feel into your heart, does this ring true for me? Because not everything on the web is true. In fact, nowadays, a lot of shit on the web is just bullshit, okay? So use your discernment. And so many years ago, you had your partnership. And when shit didn't work out, you figured it out. Now, people cheat. It's easy. You have a problem at home. You don't want to deal with it. So you're going to go and get your satisfaction somewhere else. That's avoiding that's not being responsible. That's not being an integrity. That's unpleasant. You know, now we also have a lot of counselors, relationship help. Like we need to understand that in order to thrive and create a sacred union, we have to do the work. It takes work, you guys. Yes, you can have your sexy, fun, one night stands, fuck around and go on a couple dates, get drunk, do some drugs, get high. Sure, yes, I've done it. I've been there. And now I'm coming back around. Part of spiritual journey is the cyclical path. You know, it's, it's the spiral that keeps around. And the more you, the deeper you go inside yourself, you can look back at your life and you can be like, hmm, so I did this because of this and it didn't work out. And what happens is you come back around a more conscious being looking at your past actions and hopefully in the future, making a decision to choose differently. What makes you conscious is your ability your responsibility to live better and in more integrity than you did yesterday. And there is nobody to tell you what's right or what's wrong except for you and your own inner compass. Can you go to sleep at night with pure conscience? Or do you go at sleep at night thinking of the shit you've done, things you've said, you know, should have said, should not have said. If you go to sleep at peace, wonderful. Keep going at it. But if there is things that are bothering you at night and you're not sleeping well, that is your compass. That is your internal compass telling you that something is off. Okay. And so here we are talking about sex and all the things that help us have better sex, more intentionality, more consciousness, more awareness, more knowledge of the actual like physical anatomical things that bring more pleasure to our partners actually asking questions what do you like you know just because your ex-girlfriend liked it doesn't mean your next girlfriend is gonna like it okay Ooh, something that i forgot to share so another thing that i really like that my partner is doing now he's edging me Okay, which is really fucking cool because in my tantric work, I teach about men learning how to edge themselves so that they can last longer in bed and so they can have bigger, more grandiose orgasms. It's hard, I know, I know, but it's practice. If you like tried it three times and you gave up, like that's not trying. Like 
mastering your sexuality as a man is a lifelong practice. And so it's really cool as you begin practicing this and it's really amazing when you have a partner to do it with, you can now begin practicing with her. And so what my partner has been doing, he's been What my partner has been doing, he's been practicing edging on me, which is really amazing because usually men, like there again, their goal is like to get off to an orgasm either for their partner or for men, which is great. Like, yes, we all want to get there. But what he's been doing, he's been like edging me to like eight out of 10. And then he would like slow it down and we would breathe. And then he would like bring it up again. And what's amazing, like I literally reach a point of being so fucking turned on and so like, oh my God, I want this. Like it creates almost like psychedelic experience to a point where in such level of stimulation, what I've noticed is like my body, like my yoni begins to like throb and contract where it's giving him like a lingam massage while he's like pausing inside of me. So like you edge her and then you take a break. And while your lingam is still inside of her, observe the sensations of her body. Because you're not just making love to her as a woman, but you're making love to her body as your sacred prayer to the divine, which is the whole thing of Tantra and sacred sexuality. The body is the divine. So as you make love to the divine, you're offering a prayer and a gift to the divine. Okay, this is how we begin to tap into these subtle and beautiful layers of our multidimensionality. And so I've experienced my body like throbbing and moving and like my yoni like squeezing him in all these ways where he doesn't even need to move. Like the yoni is doing all her magic and she's playing with his wand of light. And it's beautiful. It is beautiful and it is my prayer that more and more of us can experience these states of pleasure, joy, and bliss. But before we do, we have to do the healing work. We need to detoxify our mind, bodies, and spirits. We need to be reconnecting to our mind, body, and spirit. We need to be bringing back intention, awareness, and education into our love, life, and all the things. And that's why I'm here. I am a conscious sex, love, and life mentor. I am a tantric muse. I am a tantric bodywork artist. I'm a writer. I'm a poet. And recently, I also became a real estate agent in the state of Florida. I'm doing all the things because I fucking love life. I feel on fire with my ambition and my creativity and my desire for success and abundance. It is my joy to extend this radiant message to each and every one of you who's tuning in. And so I feel pretty complete at this point. Thank you so much for everyone who's tuned in. I would like to pray for you all. May you find your path. May God find his voice towards you. May you hear his voice. May you begin connecting to the sacredness of who you are. May you begin your healing path and connecting to the divinity of who you are. May you find your values and live by your virtues. May I pray for your growth, for your evolution, for your healing, for your vitality, for you and your family and all those who are listening to me. May this message resonate far and wide to all those who need it. It is my hope that together we will continue on ascending and evolving and stepping into a beautiful new frequency where love, life, bliss, joy, and abundance is our daily experience because it is our birthright. It is our birthright, you guys. And so on that note, thank you so much for everyone who's tuned in. My name is Alea Moon, or you can call me Ali. And until we see each other next time, aho.